All right, we're almost at the end. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have uh, a couple more minutes. And I, I, I realize it's a bit weird to, to end uh, a conference with introducing BASE, but, but, but I'm not going to introduce BASE to you. Uh, I'm, I'm, is this is a meta talk. I'm going to introduce a way that I think you can introduce BASE. So this is for you if you want to maybe teach somebody else BASE. Um, uh, of course, there are many different ways you could introduce uh, uh, BASE. Um, one that I, I don't particularly like, but you often see in, in, in statistics textbooks that don't focus on Bayesian statistics, is the, the base rate fallacy. So, so I'm going to the doctor, I'm taking this test, uh, and I get to know that I test positive. So what's the probability that I, that I have this horrible disease, right? Uh, but the thing is, the test is, is very good. So then most people think that, okay, then I probably have the disease. But that's often wrong if the disease is also very rare. So that's the base rate, rate fallacy, you're not considering the base rate. Using base rule, you can actually calculate all of this and you realize, I probably don't have this uh, horrible disease. Um, and this is how base, Bayesian stuff is introduced, but it's, I don't think it's very good. Like this, you, you are just doing a t-test and suddenly you're doing this instead and, and it's hard to see the, the, the similarities. Like there's no statistics, there's no est estimation, it's actually only about base rule. So after having get gotten this introduction, you're, you're None the wise, so what does this have to do with s statistical estimation? Uh, then there's the, m the mathematical one. Uh, I mean, this, this is a broad category. Um, it often has a sentence that says something, this data is normally distributed with known standard deviation because then you can do conjugate analysis and you can get everything to work. Uh, I, I, I guess this is fine if you like math, but I mean, when was ever the standard deviation known? Like, never. Uh, uh, so the problem with this one, I think, is that I w like if you really want to introduce base to somebody, I think you want to start with a, a slightly realistic example. Uh, so w like otherwise people go like, but the standard deviation is not known, and then they just block and they won't listen to you anyway. Um, another way people start introducing base is, is by saying it's about personal belief and your personal probability, and then it's often also in combination with hypothesis testing. Uh, because it's actually very difficult to have personal belief about hyper continuous hyperparameters up in some kind of hierarchical structure. It's easier to have personal belief about two discrete hypotheses. So therefore, you go for hypothesis testing. <sighs> I don't, I don't like this. It gets, it gets philosophical too fast. Like, why is the prior personal, but but the, is the model not personal? So the prior is mine, but the model is somebody else's. Uh, okay, does the model really? Update my personal prior. Why, why can't I up, why can't I update my personal prior myself by just looking at the data? Uh, how do I know what my prior is? This is actually a problem. So me and Joff, we we actually had a one day thing with the, the psychology student about, about this, and we did uh, the personal belief introduction of Bayes. And like these were psychologists, they were like, uh, th and they know that introspection of your personal mental state, that is hard, right? And suddenly we ask them to like do this with priors. So <laughs> like, like after five minutes of, of this, you, you, have, you have these really deep philosophical questions. So I think this is not a good way of introducing base either. So I'm going to give you another way, uh, which also has a lot of flaws uh, and maybe is more targeted to people that are used to program a little bit, maybe used to R or Python. Um, yeah, so, so let me go through an example. So that's basically what we're going to do for the rest of the talk. We need an example. We need an, an application domain, um, an exciting ex application domain. So we're going to go for, oh, this is the name of this method. The method is introducing base as conditioning with probability distributions represented by samples. I'm working on the title, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's something like that. OK, so we are web developers. Yay. A lot of people in the industry care about A-B testing. So this is for them. So we're web developers, we have this website, and we want to get some traffic. So we have an idea that we are going to put up an ad on some social media site. Um, but we're, we're uncertain, like we have to decide how many ads we want to have on this site up front. And even if you show an ad, it's not clear if people are actually going to click on it. Uh, so we have a couple of questions. Like, say that we show 100 ads. How many visitors and clicks are we going to get for 100 shown ads? Uh, and 
will we get more than five clicks if we show 100 ads on this social media site? Like, if we get less than five clicks, we don't think it's really worth it uh, for the cost. Um, so will we get more than five clicks? We ask the social media site, and they tell us that, that uh, ads get 10% uh, clicks. OK, so okay, this sounds like a curiously precise number, but this is what they told us in an email. They say ads get clicked on 10% of the time. <sighs> so we don't really believe that this is exactly the case for our ad, but let's run with this for now. So we want to know when we run the 100 ads, how many are going to click. So what we could do is that we can, in R or Python, write a little function that simulates people clicking on 100 ads with an underlying rate of 10%. Like you have one person, and with 10%, that person clicks. And then you do that 100 times, and then you sum up how many clicked. And then you do this simulation 100,000 times. And then you get like a distribution over how many times people are going to click. But this we have already prepared. This has pr been prepared for you. It's actually called the binomial distribution. So it's already built in into R. But it's, it's just this generative model. Okay, So we can take that for a spin. If you're not used to R, I apologize for the R code. It's, that's how it's going to be now. So uh, we, 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 we have 100 ads. There's a 10% chance that each ad generates a click. And we just want to run the simulation for a big round number. This generates a vector of samples that we can plot. And this vector of samples also now represents a probability distribution over how many clicks we're going to get when we run this ad 100 times. So just looking at this, maybe between 5 and 15%. It's a bit uncertain, but somewhere around that. Since we're working with samples, it's super easy to calculate derivatives here. So we were interested in, will we get more than five clicks? So we can just sum up how many, the proportion of samples above five. Uh, yeah, and that's 94%. So given this model, there's a 94% chance that uh, we'll get more than five clicks. Right. Uh, and this was just a little bit of code, but we've come quite far. Yeah, so what, we are, what have we done? We have represented uncertainty or future data with probability. Hmm? And we have worked with samples, something that you almost always do when you do modern Bayesian computation. But still, we haven't really done anything Bayesian, maybe. So one problem here is, is that 10% number. We don't really believe it's exactly 10%. So let's add a little bit of uncertainty over this, this parameter here. I mean, it could be that our ad is so bad that nobody would ever click on it. So then it would have like a 0% click rate. Or it could be that our ad is, is great, so it has like a double the click rate of what Facebook says ads has on general. So it could have 20% click rate. So we can translate this to maybe a uniform probability distribution between 0 and 20. It's not perfect, but it's, it's something else. It sort of captures what I just say. Said. Um, and now we can take this new vector, proportion clicks, and we can actually just plug it in here because uh, R is vectorized. So now it's going to generate 100,000 uh, samples from binomial distribution using the samples here. So um, what we get is a compound probability distribution that includes both the uncertainty up here in what the underlying rate is and the uncertainty in what's going to happen when we actually run this ad 100 times. And now it looks different, right? It's much wider now, because now we have added more uncertainty. And if we add up and see what the probability is, we we're going to get more than five clicks. We're also now more uncertain that this is going to be the case. Now it's only 70%. All right, we've done something more now. What, wha what have we done? We have now we have represented prior uncertainty over parameters with probability. That's good. That's key to doing Bayesian statistics. And we have produced a prior predicted distribution over future data. That's also pretty good. And now we actually get tired of all of this stuff, and we just decide to run our ad 100 times. So we do that, and yeah, hey, we get 13 out of 100 click, uh, out of 100 possible clicks, well, which is pretty good. And now we might want to use this information to update what we know about our ad, what, is it, what, what its rate of click, uh, underlying rate of click really is. So if you're a statistician here, you would say something like, now we just condition on this data. Uh, <coughs> most people in the real world 
don't really know what conditioning is. If you talk about conditioning, most people are going to think about conditioning hair. Okay, so just saying condition on the data is not helpful. You actually have to show it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is that I'm just going to take what we already have, which was the, the vector of the proportional clicks and the vector of the number of uh, visitors, these two distributions we looked at before, and we're just going to put it in a table together, call it prior, because this is, this is what we knew prior to before incorporating any data, right? Uh, so this is just the two, this is the uniform distribution here, samples from that one, and these are the corresponding uh, samples from the binomial. So when, when the uniform, when, when, when we got a sample of 20% from the uniform distribution, that actually resulted in a high number of clicks. Well, when we got a low sample from the uniform distribution of the number of clicks, we also actually generated very few clicks in the, in the simulation. And now we can plot this uh, against each other. Uh, and these two distributions here, you should recognize them. This is just the uniform distribution we defined ourselves. And this is the, the predictive distribution that we got out as a result, but now plotted against each other. Uh, if we look at this now, we can do some conditioning. So what is conditioning? It's basically saying conditional on this and that being, being the case, what will, what will happen with these distributions? So we can say conditional on the probability of clicking being exactly 10%. Uh, how will this change? Well, we can just select all those samples where, where we, we get exactly 10% clicks or where the underlying click rate is exactly 10% and throw everything else away. And now we're actually back with the probability distribution we got first. Um, uh, of course, this is a lot of work, so I don't know why we would do this, uh, like generating this, this big joint distribution and then conditioning it back, but we can do it. This is conditioning, and of course, we can condition on uh, many other values of the proportion clicks. The problem is that this is not what we're interested in. We, we don't know what the proportion, proportion, underlying proportion of clicks is, and we, so it doesn't really make sense to condition on that. What we do know is the data, right? We know that we got 13 out of 100 clicks. So we can condition on that instead uh, on different values. Um, and now we get a distribution over what the likely click rate could be instead, right? And when we actually did the experiment, we got 13 out of 100 click clicks. Uh, so now we get a probability distribution that looks like the proportion of uh, clicks is somewhere between 10 and 20%. This is super easy to do in R. Like we had this, this table of, of samples, and we just filter out all those rows that were, uh, or we just keep all those rows where the number of clicks is 13. We put it into a, a variable we call posterior because this is what we get after posterior to having used the data. And now we can pl uh, plot uh, the posterior proportion clicks. This is just the, the distribution that was uh, turned on the side before. So after having used this data over 13 clicks, we get that the click rate for our ad is probably between mm, 10 and 15%. Uh, and as a last step to be extra cool, what we're going to do is that we're going to take this posterior over the proportion clicks. We're again going to do this trick with plugging this in uh, to a, a binomial distribution as the underlying uh, proportion of clicks. And this is going to generate a new posterior predictive probability distribution over what's going to happen the next time we run 100 ads. And again, we can calculate what the probability is that we're going to get more than five visitors. And since we now got 13 visitors, now the in uh, probability increased to 97%. Oof. Uh, so what have we now achieved? Now we've also done Bayesian inference by conditioning on the data. And we produced a posterior predictive distribution. Yeah, so we've gone from prior, a prior predictive, to posterior and posterior predictive. And we only used very basic R commands. It's only generating and filtering, almost no probability. But, we, we, but we've done almost all the token parts of Bayesian, uh, Bayesian inference and Bayesian statistics. Of course, there are many things that are bad with this way of introducing Bayes. Like, <laughs> I'm a bit uncomfortable with that there is no explicit mention of, of, of probability here. It's kind of hidden behind the random probability generating functions. 
Uh, you never see base rule, which might be good, but might be bad. But here we do conditioning instead, so then you actually don't need to mention base rule. Um, as ABC, this is kind of an ABC method. The computational method doesn't really scale to other models. Uh, and of course, uh, this is something you would do in a, like a 30-minute session in the, in the middle of a class. But of course, it would be better to have a one-semester course, right? So this is just a quick way of introducing base. But I think it's also good. Like It's an ex applied example. It's a kind of realistic situation. Uh, and it's really focused on getting a grip of uncertainty, uh, which I think is, is good. It's not focused about finding the true parameter values. Uh, and everything is there. We, we, we're doing priors, posteriors, samples, prediction, data, Bayesian updating. Everything is there. It's, it's pretty cool, I think. And you build it up from scratch. In R, there is no magic Markov Shane Monte Carlo thing going on. And <sighs> It's kind of a crappy model, but I think this is good. Like the first model is, is really crappy, like where we say there is a exactly a 10% chance of, of people clicking. That, we, we know that it's a really bad model, and then we make it slightly better using this uniform prior, but it's also a strange prior. What about, it's like uniform from 0 to 20%, what about 21%? Uh, but and then we condition on the data, and then it becomes a little bit better. So we go from a really crappy model to a slightly less crappy model, but I think this is good. Uh, because a lot of statistics, uh, it's, uh, when you introduce statistics, it often sounds like you're, you're out for the, the true model or the, the, the correct model, and you worry about if the data is really normally distributed. And I don't think that's what statistics is about at all. And, and this focuses on what I think statistics is more about. I think statistical modeling is not about building the perfect true model. It's really about building a less crappy one. And this little exercise teaches students that. So this was one way of introducing base 